So, the schematic is very clear right, so same as the gas. So, in this case we can also have a process done in a using a shielding gas okay. So, in the SMAW in most of the cases we do not use shielding, it is all shelf shielded whereas in flux cold arc welding we can also play around the, flux, the composition of the flux. In some case, so you want to have a maximum alloying. So, you want to reduce the concentration of the, the flux, especially calcium carbonate for example. So, then the shielding gas which you generate is not sufficient to have a sustained arc. So, this process can also be now shielded by external shielding, okay. So, in that case, so you can reduce the, the gas generating components, compounds from the flux, you can add more amount of alloying elements, okay. So, in that case uh, your process stability increases, it is similar to GMAW. The advantage is the, you get the, the efficiency of GMAW and you also have advantage of an FCAW by having flux, the flux interfering with the Doppler transfer, enhancing the kinetics of Doppler transfer, also protecting the well pool by the flux, the slag, yes, it is clear, okay, we will see one by one when we go further. So, sometimes you may also send the shielding gas and if you are using a, a, a self shielded FCAW, you do not need shielding gas because flux itself can generate shielding gas, right, it is clear. So, then you have a slag depositor on top of the well pool and then you can break it after welding, good. So, this is the cross section of uh, the, the electrode which you saw in last class as well, right. So, you have an outer shielding and then the flux is inside, okay. So, now it is almost compacted, so you can have a look at it and then, uh, so this is 2.4 mm uh, diameter uh, FCAW, it will not come out even if you tap because it is already compacted, right. So, it is already compacted with the binder. So, the, uh, the all the, the compounds or the flux are added inside and then uh, the, the electrode is made from the flat strip and then you add the flux powder and then you see close it and most of the case, most cases it is not really welded, it is just simple folding, right. So, they just fold it and then they close the seam and you can generate uh, uh, as much length as possible and then uh, generally we make it uh, similar to what GMAW electrode filler. So, we will have uh, uh, spools of electrodes made with varying weights and lengths and that can be fed into the uh, power source, yes, it is clear, it's good. So, typical cross section looks like, so you can make in a seamless tube, right, so or you also have a butt seam. And this is the electrode I gave you, it is a butt seamed electrode, okay, where you have simple uh, joint or you can also have an, a varying joggle seam on the complex section. So, in this case, so you can also improve or increase the amount of alloy molten, molten. So, in this case, the cross section of or the length of the, uh, the metal is much lower than uh, when you have uh, such a geometry. So, so if, you, if you want to increase the liquid metal droplet, the contribution from the, 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 the actual the metal, so you can also change the, the sheet geometry in such a way that you know, in this case you melt more metal and then you have a little amount of flux surrounding the, the metal sheet. So, these kind of electrodes, the amount of flux is which is there, it is not sufficient to produce enough shielding, okay. So, because here the, the metal volume is much higher than the, the flux volume. So, such a geometry, complex section geometry is used with conjunction with the shielding gas, okay. In most of the cases self shielded uh, FCAW would have an uh, uh, design of an, uh, a seamless tube or a butt seamed uh, the electrode. So, for an, a complex section or joggle seam sectioned uh, 
the FCIW consumable, generally you need to have an extra shielding because the, the volume fraction of flux with respect to the, the metal decreases significantly. So, you need to generate more gas. So, you may have to use an external shielding. Yes, it is clear. So, these are the commonly used uh, the designs for FCW. The one is circulated, it is actually but seamed. FCW consumable. Okay, good. Any questions so far? Move otherwise? Good. So, the melting rate in uh, GMAW, what is the melting rate? So, this goes away, right? In GMAW, the melting rate of the consumable is alpha times i beta L i square by A. What is L here? What is L? Stick out length. Exactly. So, you have an, an electrode tube, contact tube, okay, and then so you have an electrode coming in in form of an arc, isn't it? And this is stick out length L. Okay, so, this distance, what is the distance? This is contact tip and this is work piece, is not it? Then what is this distance? This is contact tip to workplace distance, okay. It is very simple. So, CTWD, that is what we define all the time. CTWD minus arc length is your stick out length, right. So, CTWD defines the distance between the contact tip to the workplace and that is a very important parameter, right. So, CTWD is an important parameter because that would determine the stick out length and the arc length. Okay, if you are doing in a constant arc length case, at a given CTWD, then your L should be based on your melting rate, is not it? So, in a conventional GMAW, so we use uh, an I plus I square relationship, whereas in this case, we also have to have an another term because the heat is also consumed by the flux, is not it? So, when we did the heat balance to calculate the, the melting rate, Right. So, we looked at uh, four important parameters, is not it? When if, if a consumable is an anode, okay, the heat generated in the anode, so that is Q A, is not it? Plus latent heat of melting, right, and then heat generated in the anode by resistance heating, and then the heat needed to increase the temperature of Doppler to the Doppler temperature. Okay, that is the heat balance we did it to calculate the melting rate, right. Apart from these four, there is another factor here when you use the consumable welding. Which factor is that? So, heat absorbed or heats eaten away by the flux, right. So, there is another component comes in when you are doing a mass balance or heat balance is the K factor. So, that factor governs the heat consumed by the flux. So, again that is a function of the composition of the flux, whether you have an, an, a rotile based or a basic flux or cellulosic material. So, again the as a function of stick out length, we can also calculate the wire feed rate. So, if you increase stick out, stick out length, what happens to the melting rate? So, if you increase stick out length for example, 25 mm for a given current 150 amperes. Stick out length increases means melting rate also increases, is not it? So, this is the low stick out length 5 mm and this is 25 mm, is not it? So, this is 5 mm. So, at 150 amperage, you are welding uh, uh, of a uh, 2.4 mm uh, flux code arc welding. Just by changing stick out length, you can almost double the melting rate. Okay, isn't it? From 4 mm per minute to 8 mm per minute, it's almost doubled, isn't it? But current is same. Current is same. 
So, why the melting rate the melting rate is changing? Hmm? See if the current is the same, your question is why does melting rate increase? Look at this equation. If check out length changes, melting rate increases. Okay, because the more the length, the more joule heating. Okay, so you looked at joule heating, right? So what is joule heating formula? Hmm? I square r. Okay, rho l by pi r square. I square. Isn't it? So that's how we derive in the melting rate equation by heat balance, is it it? So, what is L here? L is this stick out length. So, more the stick out length, more joule heating, then more heat is there for melting, right? So, it is again the heat balance what we derived. So, by just changing the uh, stick out length, you see that already the melting rate can be doubled, right? So, that is what, no, by all other parameters in this equation are fixed, that is why we take it as a constant because the process efficiency is depending on the, the sealing gas, the characteristic of uh, the ionization, the reactions, the heat generation which is ha happening. That is what the equation I first time I derived, right, the electric resistivity of an arc. Okay, that, that is determined by the arc characteristics, right. So, that is fixed for a given process, for given shielding conditions and given polarity, okay. So, what are the factors it can influence? Apart from that is your composition. So, composition is fixed. If composition is changing, latent heat of melting is changing, right? And the H is changing and then you also change Cp, specific heat capacity. When Cp changes, then you also change the heat required to increase the temperature of the droplet. So, now you fix the process, you fix the chemistry and what are the parameters you can contribute? Okay. So, in, in this QC, QA term, the only parameter which is changed irrespective of process and the composition is current. Okay. So, the current can be changed. Okay. In the resistance heating part and joule heating part, there are two other parameters is the diameter and the length. Okay. So, you fix a diameter for a given uh, well diameter, uh, uh, consumable diameter. So, what other factors can be changed? The length. Right, the so length is stick out length L. Right, so two parameters independently can change by fixing everything. Say so suppose that is that is why it is called independent parameters because that can also change person to person. So, you weld the today morning and uh, next guy comes and welds and if he changes stick out length, everything is the same, shielding is the same, the whole process is the same, right, material is the same, diameter is the same. Even if you fix the current, if you change the stick out length, then melting rate change, right, it is clear. So, this graph shows in FCAW by changing the, the stick out length, you can almost double the melting rate, yes, it is clear, okay, good. So, the K factor takes care of the heat consumed by the flux by decomposition to generate hydrogen and the gases, uh, carbon dioxide, there is other sealing gases, good. So, the main reactions for sealing air generation in these uh, flux coated electrodes or uh, FCAW electrodes is a calcium carbonate burning into calcium oxide and CO2 and calcium oxide it forms a slag and CO2 is a shielding gas, okay. So, in cellulosic material the fluxes carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and also the hydrogen, okay. So, cellulosic material if they contain titanium oxide, it also generates hydrogen. In rotile based fluxes, the main sealing gas is hydrogen because titanium oxide can effectively reduce the water into hydrogen and oxygen flux, okay. So, that is why the titanium oxide nowadays is very commonly explored by the uh, nano nano guys to generate hydrogen by photocatalytic. So, nano titanium oxide rotyl used as a catalyst to uh, uh, so it decompose water 
into hydrogen and oxygen because titanium oxide has a photocatalytic effect. So, when uh, the water droplet comes to the surface of the titanium oxide, it promotes the disintegration of water into hydrogen into oxygen. Okay. So, titanium oxide nowadays people explore left and right generate uh, the nano titanium oxide, use it as a uh, photocatalytic uh, uh, agent to generate hydrogen. So, hydrogen fuel cells you may see they use nano uh, titanium oxide or tile and we use it welding also, but we do not really call ourselves nano guys because ultimately when the titanium oxide is added in the flux, it would disintegrate, it becomes nano titanium oxide, oxide and we generate hydrogen, right. That is why I call welding, welding we does everything, okay. So, we make steel making, we also work on uh, you know, hydrogen generation, right. So, but it has been done uh, for several years and we do not claim ourselves uh, as an advanced researchers. So, we play a low level, okay, but still uh, we use the titanium oxide to generate hydrogen for shielding. Right. So, these three are the major uh, reactions that are happening to generate shielding gas. So, if you reduce the flux concentration, increase the metal volume fraction, then you need to use some shielding. Okay. So, in self shielding, uh, self shielding electrodes, we do not need external shielding because the flux decomposes and generates enough shielding gas for arcing. Right. It is clear? Good. So, we move on. So, I just put uh, four important roles of fluxes in uh, the SMAW and FCAW. The main important function is obviously it should generate shielding gas, right. So, either be carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or hydrogen. So, the that is the main function to generate shielding gas. And apart from this, there are some secondary functions these fluxes do. They act as a deoxidizer for the well pool, okay, and they also denitrify and they cleanse the well pool, and you can also have a depossphorization, desulfurization done by adding an acid elements which promote deoxidization, denitrification, desulfurization, or depossphorization, okay, so to clean the well pool, and then uh, to improve the arc stability. Because we know that you know the oxides have very low ionization potential, so they also promote ionization. So if you improve the ionization, so obviously arc stability increases. Again, ultimately the basic definition of arc is sustained discharge. So discharge is sustained to have a stable arc. So if you promote ionization by adding oxides, so arc stability increases automatically. Of course, these fluxes can also be added <coughs> to change the alloy composition of the element. Okay, so, we can also add a precipitation uh, inducing elements like ferro-niobium, ferro-titanium in steels and you can also act as a grain refining elements in the fluxes. So, these are all uh, the, the secondary functions, but the primary functions in these processes to generate shielding gas, right. Good. So, what are types of uh, the commonly used uh, flux code arc welding electrodes? So, I said uh, for plain carbon steels, so we have uh, uh, rutile. So, if you use rutile, obviously, if you do not have enough flux to generate the shielding gas, you need external shielding. So, rutile uh, electrodes with the gas shielded. So, that means that you need to have an organ cylinder if you want to use an organ. So, then it becomes organ plus hydrogen shielding, is not it, right? Because uh, rutile can generate hydrogen and then organ can come from the bottle and then the shielding would be from organ plus hydrogen, right? The basic gas shielded shielding will be organ plus CO2, right? And in SMAW, so most of the cases, organ plus CO2, 
right? So, because you most cases you will have a calcium carbonate flexus. So, you will have uh, an organ and external shielding and then CO2 generated from the burning of uh, the flux. In self shielded uh, electrodes which I circulated this is self shielded electrode. So, where you have a maximum moment of flux generated, maximum amount of gas generated by the decomposition of the flux. Right? So, we do not use any extra shielding for the electrode I just sent around because this electrode is self shielded where the flux inside the, the, uh, the, the core of uh, this electrode burns and generates carbon dioxide. So, this is self shielded carbon dioxide electrode and you can see the video the process when we welded this electrode. So, this is the electrode which I sent around okay. and you see the metal droplet formed and most of the cases the droplet transfer is rippled globular. So, the flux burns and generate the required shielding gas you see the disintegration of flux right. The flux actually goes in and then it burns and generates the shielding gas required. So, these are the fumes that are generated by the burning of flux and sometimes you may also have if you have an, a metal added in the flux and you also have a vaporization of metals. For example, if you look at these fumes over here, so suppose if you have an, a, 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 a ferrochromium added, suppose some guy wanted to I want a chromium in the well metal. Okay? So, you need to add a chromium, ferrochromium, when ferrochromium burns and it can also generate ferrochromium and the exavalent chromium vapors. So, the amount of vapor you generate by burning these fumes are huge. Okay. So, these kind of carcinogenic fumes are very bad for the welder's health. So, so generally the flux burns and generate the shielding gas. In this case, the self shielded FCAW, the electrode, where carbon dioxide is generated as an arcing gas. So, so you see that you know, the, the this is an, a basic electrode that means that there is no titanium oxide. You see the uh, the electrode uh, the, the Doppler diameter it can go as high as double the size of the electrode diameter is not it. So, so, the Doppler is still intact sticking to the the electrode tip it is highly viscous the surface tension it still keeps the electrode intact to the tip. So, if you add some amount of titanium oxide the Doppler detachment can be promoted because titanium oxide is known to reduce surface tension right. So, in this case you see that so droplet is still attached can you see the droplet. So, now it is masked by the arc yeah see the droplet is attached by the surface tension right can you see that. So, this is the droplet and this is the, the filler and the arc is there generated by the burning of the flux and this molten droplet is exposed to the atmosphere and during this process the molten droplet also vaporize. So, that is you generate the fumes right. So, now this electrode if it contains slightly high amount of titanium oxide or some fluxes which can reduce the surface tension then droplet diameter can be smaller and it can be attached easily. So, that is the role of uh, the fluxes. Okay. So, in this self seeded electrode which is primarily a calcium carbonate based you see that it is still attached and we are burning for quite some time. So, I do not know if this video may contain a yeah. So, now it is almost like a dip transfer it is still attached you see that and it diameter is more than 5 mm. So, finally, it goes into the pool by the dip transfer 
right. So, another video you see that clearly. So, it is almost like a deep transfer. You see that surface tension, yeah. See, it goes up even, it does not want to go down, right. So, because of the highly viscous liquid which is there. So, this Doppler transfer can be changed by changing the flux composition. So, these are commonly used uh, uh, the, the electro types, rutile, basic, self shielded and self shielded also basic, but in basic electrode the, the volume fraction of uh, the alloy, the metal wire is much higher than the self shielded. Okay. And uh, the electrodes which are used for hot facing and uh, stainless steel, they are all mostly rutile based electrodes. Okay. So, rotile based electrodes are commonly used for hard facing and surfacing alloys because of improved uh, process stability and uh, you can also use hydrogen as a shielding for stainless steel, is not it. So, the austenitic stainless steels they do not have an embrittlement problem. Good. Any questions so far? Then we will move on to the metal transfer in this process in this case. So, in the most of the rotile based uh, electrodes, the metal transfer is same as GMAW because rotile reduces surface tension. So, the droplet can be transferred it is with smaller diameter, right? And you also have an, a free flight transfer when you have a, a rotile based transfer, rotile based electrode transfer, and you will have a, a simple free flight droplet transfer and the Doppler diameter can be much smaller because titanium oxide favorably change the surface tension and that improves the transfer characteristics, right. So, that is this is the simple, say a simple uh, schematic uh, Professor John Norish is given uh, in this book. So, where a rotel electrode promotes the Doppler transfer characteristic with much smaller diameter by influencing the uh, uh, surface tension. The video I showed you that is not rotile electrode, that is a uh, self shielded uh, in the electrode, where the droplet is not transferred at all. I mean for keeping longer time, uh, droplet is still intact. Okay. So, by just adding throwing some titanium oxide and we can promote the trouble transfer uh, much more effectively by changing surface tension, right. It is clear. So, in uh, the basic shield electrode that is what you showed you. So, in most of the cases the droplet would be attached. So, and then you would start striking an arc between the droplet and then you still have an, a, a finger developed by the molten flexes attached to the, the electrode and which is commonly seen. So, you will have rippled the transfer and then a, a finger pattern develops at the electrode tip by the molten flexes and uh, by the decreasing uh, by the uh, surface tension the molten uh, doppler would be sticking to the electrode tape and forming an a rippled globular transfer yes in a basic gas shielded uh, fractal arc welding again self shielding uh, it increases even further like i showed you in the video in the uh, in the second video the predominant uh, the transfer mechanism is a rippled globular Right. So, you want to see the video again, you see that. So, this the electrode becomes you see the rippled mode the transfer. So, this is the tip of the electrode and this is the contact tip and this is the stick out length, right. So, you see that upon increasing in size 
you will also establish an, an start circuiting and dip transfer. The moment dip transfer happens because of increasing Lorentz force and this would explode. Yeah, so now it is exploding. You see this? You see the explosion? Yes? See, because of the explosion, it is also still pushed up, and the surface tension is so strong, it keeps the droplet <coughs> attached to the electrode surface. Yeah, it's clear. So this is most commonly observed in self-shielded FCW or self-shielded MMAW electrodes, where the droplet transfer is always rippled globular because of the increased surface tension. Yes, it's clear. So this is uh, an, uh, an, a graph showing the droplet volume versus current in FCW and MMAW. So metal cold electrodes. MMA electrodes and this is rutile and basic and you say that in rutile bed electrodes the doppler diameter is always smaller at any case, is not it? This is a current and this electrode diameter. You see that for a given current the rutile base electrode will always transfer in smaller diameter. Why? Yeah, TaO2 surface tension because you always have a smaller diameter transferred in rutile base electrode. Whereas in basic and metal code, obviously this also contains basic fluxes. Where in basic fluxes, the drop to diameter will always be higher. Yes, it's clear. Then what needs to be done? You need to be done. We see you can't add uh, titanium oxide to this. So then you will also generate hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can add, we can think about adding some other fluxes which can favorably change the surface tension. For example fluorides okay so fluorides or silicates that can be added but then if you add the fluorides and silicates there are other complications so you now we have to play around with the flux chemistry so you can th add you can add about I mean think about adding uh, titanium oxide but uh, the hydrogen can should be pinned by some other, some other elements like for example boron okay so we can also form uh, boron hydrides it can be removed as an slag. So then we'll, the systematic studies should be done to achieve uh, the required uh, Doppler transfer. So if once you understand the science behind the process, then we can uh, we can tackle even as very common day-to-day uh, -day -day problems. Right. So it's clear the rutile base consumables always give a smaller Doppler diameter because of the reduction in surface tension of the droplet. Okay. So what are limitations of FCW? The cost of the consumables, as I said in the last class, the consumables are much more expensive than uh, the wire. Although if you look at uh, the actual investment you put up in a factory to make in, uh, these electrodes are much, much you know, reasonably small. But the flux composites, the, the work you do to achieve the composition and then generate uh, the electrodes with the flux coating or uh, the with, uh, flux code arc weld uh, electrodes and it makes the consumable expensive compared to GMAW, right? And the other uh, the important disadvantage is fume generation by the burning of uh, the fluxes and then ferrolize you have in flux and then consistency of the consumables that is also problematic because the, the, uh, the achieving a uniform flux coating is also very tricky. Now these are powder based, you will have to mix it with binder and then deposit. You need to achieve a homogeneous mixing of the fluxes, the, the ingredients in the fluxes. So you always have some difference in consistency across the length of the electrodes. Right? So these are the some disadvantages, but this can be overcome by the advantages of the process. For example, if you look at the overall cost comparison between GMAW and FCAW, GMAW is gas metal arc welding and this is flux code arc welding. 
the consumable is always 3 times higher in the flux coil arc welding or in SMAW the cost right. But you overcome that by other factors for example, you do not need shielding gas if you use self shielded the electrodes right or even if you use an, an a retail based electrode the shielding gas necessary is much less than what you need for GMAW ok. And then uh, you also have an improved efficiency from the process. So, you need an, uh, less power and also the shielding gas which you use also ionize much more lower temperatures. And of course, in GMAW it is uh, more uh, labor laborious, the consumable is almost 3 times expensive. So, if you add all these costs together, these uh, FCAW and uh, MMAWs are much more cheaper than uh, MMAW, uh, the GMAW, right, it is clear, ok, good. Any questions so far? Otherwise, we can see if, whether we can go to the next chapter.